So it's Tuesday morning, and on a Tuesday morning, we speak to Archbishop William Slattery, and we've been, of course, uh, talking about the modern popes, uh, Your Grace. And uh, thank you very much for this valuable information that we've received from you so far. And, uh, you know, it really makes us look at these popes uh, from a different light in many ways, you know, from a positive light. And uh, really from academic uh, point of view, I suppose an intellectual uh, point of view as well, but also, you know, from a prayerful uh, point of view as well. And it just says that the popes are well-rounded like that. So thank you very much uh, for all that info that we've shared about the, the popes. Last week, we were looking at uh, Pope Francis. How are you, Your Grace, and what are we looking at today? Well, uh, can you thank you very much. Yes, we have indeed been looking at all the modern popes, starting with uh, St. John the 23rd down to Pope Francis last week. Uh, now, next week, I wish to continue by looking a little bit more deeply at uh, the teaching of Pope Francis, responding to the needs and challenges of the world uh, today. But today, uh, I want to set aside some time for a very specific South African topic. And that is, you know, uh, on the 24th of uh, May, that is yesterday, Monday, um, the, we celebrated the uh, birth in heaven, let us put it like that, of Abbot Franz Fanner, who was the founder of the Marion Hill Missionaries and also the Precious Blood Sisters, who did enormous work uh, for the foundation of the Catholic Church uh, in South Africa, especially all the eastern seaboard down here, even as from, you could say, Queenstown up through Umtata, uh, Kokstad, Umzimkulu, Marion Hill, Durban, up to Dundee, and indeed now all over the world. Abbot Franz, then, is certainly a hero of the South African church, and I'm delighted to speak about him because in his commitment to spreading the faith, to being a missionary disciple of Jesus, uh, we see someone inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this is a wonderful time of the year, Kenya, because it is Pentecost time. Last Sunday, we celebrated the wonderful feast of Pentecost. This coming Sunday, it's Holy Trinity. And in Abbot Franz, we see someone definitely inspired by the Spirit of God. So I wish to speak about him and his work and impact on South Africa, on our own church. He was born in Austria in 1825. That is almost 200 years ago. Uh, he was born in a, on a farm. As a young man, he decided to become a diocesan priest, studied in the seminary, became a priest. After a number of years as chaplain and parish priest there in Austria, he felt a call to live a life of prayer, a life of silence, a life of building up the kingdom of God in prayer. So he joined a congregation of religious and order called the Trappists, the Trappists. They are a form of Benedictines, a form of Cistercians. They are a reform of the Cistercians. They live a life of work, intense prayer, and almost complete silence, and focusing their whole contemplative prayer life on Jesus and God as the source of peace and through God and through the union with the spirit of God, you know, bringing peace and goodness into the world by their prayers, to pray for the world. Now, uh, he founded his own monastery after a number of years and was beginning to have it established when a bishop came from South Africa. This bishop, Bishop Rickards, was actually the bishop of the Eastern Vicariate, or if you like, the Diocese of Port Elizabeth today. And he had a big problem, Bishop Rickards, because he was responsible for all of South Africa, north of Port Elizabeth, up as far at least as the Limpopo River. And he just had a few oblates of Mary Immaculate working here in Natal, working around Durban, uh, Peter Marisburg, and beginning to move out slowly and into Lesotho with Blessed uh, Joseph Gerard. So this bishop went to Europe begging for priests, for missionaries, for sisters to come and work here among especially the Zulu people and come and uh, speak the word of God, bring God's message to the people. Now, the bishop 
went to many different people asking for help, but they all said, sorry, we don't have enough men or we don't have people wishing to go. So eventually they were having a big meeting, the leaders of the Trappists, and Abbot Franz was a leader by this time, and the bishop came to them and said, look, I need somebody. Our people want to know more of Jesus Christ. And after a long silence, Abbot Franz stood up and said, if nobody will go, I will go. That was in 1879. Just a few years later, two or three years later, he arrived here in South Africa. The Bishop of Port Elizabeth had given him a piece of land, but it didn't work out well. It was a time of great drought in South Africa. It was not suitable for agriculture. And the Trappists always supported themselves by working very much as farmers on the land. So they left Port Elizabeth, Dunbrody, and came up here and acquired a farm just beside Pine Town, inland 20 kilometers from Durban. And there they established what they called Marianne Hill. That is called a, mo a monastery called after Mary and her mother, Anne, Mary and Anne, Marianne Hill. And Abbot Franz founded this. Then he went to Europe and a man of great faith and trust in God. He brought out first 30 and then 100 and then eventually 300 priests and brothers, mainly brothers, uh, to come and work and build up the church here in South Africa. It was an act of tremendous confidence in God because he did not know the country, he did not know the climate, he did not know agricultural conditions, he did not know, you know, how an earth could get started, how he could provide for all these people. Not only that, but when he came out here and began to build up the monastery uh, in Marion Hill, he found that the, the, the women also, the girls also kept coming and saying, we also want a school. We also need clinics. We also need hospitals. So he called out young German speaking women, Mother Paula and many others to come here. And out of them, he st established what we know as the congregation of the precious blood. So he's a man who established the precious blood sisters in South Africa. Now, uh, when he came here, uh, he found that the people were very keen to learn in the schools. They were in great need of medical care. Because there were no rural clinics at all at that time, none. It was the Catholic Church that established all the first rural clinics in South Africa. And through the person of Abbot Franz, Mother Paula and the Precious Blood Sisters. And soon uh, the missionaries began to spread from Marion Hill up to Reichenau and they established famous missions like uh, Maria Zell, like Maria Tal, Topo, like uh, uh, Sentecau, like Maria Ratchets, like Maria Marion Hill and so on. All over this area they found magnificent parishes and in each one they built a magnificent parish church. They established a clinic, a school, they sent sisters there. Slowly remember, this is well over 120 years ago. These people had to travel by horse. They had to travel by foot, you know, provisions. They had to provide for themselves. It was, there was, communication was very difficult. Um, the life was very difficult at that time. Some of them died even as young people. Now, over this time, Abbot Franz then supported them as best he could by writing many articles. He went on a few visits overseas to collect funds, to collect more people, to get people interested in the, the growth of the Catholic Church in South Africa. And then uh, he, of course, like all holy people, trying to do good things for God, he ran into all kinds of opposition. You know, the fact that he was training African people here, uh, where white people felt that they had first preference, did not interest Abbot Franz. He came for everybody. And so he opened schools and clinics, especially for the Zulu population. And this whole area could almost say of Natal. Uh, also, but however, his greatest opposition came from within the church. Because now the Trappists themselves began to look at the kind of life Abbot Franz and his brothers and sisters were living uh, in Europe. The Trappists had a tradition of remaining in their monastery, living a life of silence, 
living a life of uh, dedicated work, a life of many hours singing the office in the church, even early in the morning at three o'clock, right up until eight o'clock at night. And so how could they um, break away from the community and live in small groups in parishes all over a huge area? Uh, it was not within the rule of the Trappists to do that. So uh, a great struggle came about how you balance missionary parish priest, if you like, pastoral life, with a contemplative, enclosed, silent life of the Trappist. Eventually, the order um, asked Father Franz to uh, retire as abbot, and he went to the wonderful mission of Lourdes, and from there he built uh, a beautiful small mission called Emmaus in the Diocese of Umsum Kulu today. And there he lived for the last 15 years of his life, isolated from his community, but uh, encouraging them in every way, helping to formulate their rule. Now, uh, Pope Pius X, Saint Pope Pius X, became aware of this, uh, you know, question of conscience that the Trappers had regarding the type of work uh, that they were doing in South Africa. And so he said, those who wish to live as Trappers can go back to Europe, to the monasteries they came from, but those who want to remain in South Africa, I am going to establish a new congregation called the Congregation of Marion Hill, CMM. And for the sisters, uh, gradually grew up the Congregation of the Precious Blood. They were known as the Red Sisters. They were dressed in red at first. Today, they're dressed in, they're dressed in white. Uh, Abbot Franz took great care to see that they were all provided for. Now, when I think of Abbot Franz, you know, I remember, I see the spirituality. I'm working here now in Marion Hill for the last eight months, you know, helping here in the uh, in the di this wonderful diocese with these great people here. And, you know, I find in them something of the spirituality, of the personality, of the faith, of the lived faith of Abbot Franz. I find in them a great love for the Mass and for the Eucharist. Abbot Franz gave them that as part of their heritage, a love of the Mass and a love of the Eucharist, the people in this area. He also very much preached devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, telling them that they were loved, that our God was not a God to be feared, that God is a God of love, to look at the heart of Jesus, that is, to look at the intense love which made Jesus die on the cross to free us from our sins and to give us confidence in approaching God. He, Abbot Franz also, every, every uh, parish he founded, he put the name of Mary on it, Marianne Hill, you know, Maria Telt, Maria Zell, and so on, Mary of Sentecau, Marianne Hill, yes. Um, he gave them a great love for Mary, the mother of God. Jesus, of course, is our savior, but she is the mother of Jesus, and also a love for the church which this diocese has retained. And today, uh, Marion Hill is the diocese, the strongest Catholic diocese, I would argue, in South Africa, because it's self-sufficient. It has plenty of vocations, almost 30 uh, seminarians at the moment. We ordained six last week, priests and deacons. Another five are waiting to be ordained deacons this year. And in every parish, we have local priests from this diocese, and also the people keep the diocese financially solvent. So uh, this really is a very advanced diocese because of that, because of the work of Abbot Franz. Now, you know, when I was thinking about Abbot Franz, you know, uh, on Saturday, I went there to Emmaus, you know, to see the room, to see the place where he died. It's a beautiful mission near Lourdes, just beyond the town of Umzumkulu, 20 kilometers. Very, very well worth a visit. It's a beautiful area. And there uh, we prayed and a huge number of people came, even though it was very cold, it was wet and windy. And with Bishop Zuba leading the ceremony, I had to say some words about Abbot Franz. And, you know, uh, Kanye, this year is the year of St. Joseph. And uh, Kenya, our, our Veritas Radio, is very much conscious of that. And so I looked at St. Joseph and Abbot Franz, and I saw there was a, a, they have a number of things in common, similarities. You know, first of all, I would say both of them were people, St. Joseph and Abbot Franz, people who trusted in God. 
They trusted in God. You know, Joseph, you know, uh, he had four dreams. And in these dreams, he heard God speaking to him. Uh, he did not, I'm sure, see God personally standing in front of him. But in the dreams, God seemed to speak to him. Four dreams you'll find in the New Testament uh, uh, that St. Joseph had. First of all, uh, you know, he a dream told him that the child that Mary was carrying was a child of the Holy Spirit, was Jesus. And he believed and was faithful to that and protected them and took Jesus and Mary as his own family. Secondly, he had a dream that Herod wanted to kill the child. Thirdly, he took the, well, he took the child down to Egypt. In Egypt, he had another dream that now Herod had died, he could go back to Israel. And then he set out for Israel on the way back. He had a dream which told him that Herod's uh, son, Archelaus, was now king in place of his father. And so he decided not to go to Judea, not to go to Bethlehem, but he went with Mary and Jesus up to Nazareth. And there as carpenter, he provided for them. Here was a man who took great risks uh, because he listened to the voice of God. Now, Abbot Franz, I see so much of that, that trust in God. Imagine leaving, you know, your settled monastery that you have established over in Europe and coming out here 9,000 kilometers, bringing hundreds of brothers and priests with you where you don't know the climate, you don't know the country, you don't know the person, you don't know the language. You don't even know parish work because you are actually a contemplative. And here, Abbot Franz uh, uh, trusted in God, that God is faithful, that God would be with him. He said, let us go forward. Let us go in the name of God. And when you go in the name of God, God is faithful and God will be there for you. So like St. Joseph, Abbot Franz was a man of deep trust in God. And even when they removed him from being abbot, he lived in silence, lived a life of prayer, praying for the work that lay behind him. So uh, Joseph and, uh, and, and Abbot Franz, people who trusted in God. Uh, secondly, I, I would say they were tender, loving carers, fathers. They were tender, loving men who cared and loved for their people. Uh, St. Joseph can see, you know, how he spent his whole life at the service of Jesus and Mary. He was with them. He did not abandon them. He accompanied them. He made them safe. He provided for them. You could even say, uh, you know, he taught them because he brought them to the temple and to the synagogue. This is St. Joseph in the New Testament. And Abbot Franz, too, spent his whole life, you know, teaching his monks, inspiring them. Imagine finding 300 people, young men, and bringing them out here. Then all these young sisters who came as precious blood sisters. Abbot Franz, they found in him a father. And uh, this is something, dear men, that we need to remember today in this South Africa, in this world of abuse, in this world in which so many men neglect their families. You know, Cyril Rama and the President, Cyril, uh, President Ramaphosa told me that 60% of birth certificates in South Africa in 2018 have no father's name on the birth certificate. 60%, three out of five children have no named father. Now, uh, in this age, we need to learn from people like St. Joseph who remain close to Jesus and Mary. We need to learn from Abbot Franz, who in spite of tremendous difficulties, of tremendous responsibilities, uh, he pioneered. He gave himself totally by writing, by press, by visits, by funding, and by uh, responding to the needs of the people around him. Abbot Franz looked into the faces of the Zulu people. He saw they were thirsty to know more about God and about Jesus. They were keen on education. They badly needed health care. There was no health care for them at all in those years. And so he responded to that. He heard the call of God in the needs of the people around him. And finally, I would say St. Joseph and uh, Abbot Franz have this in common, that they brought or, you know, they opened the door for Jesus. They opened the door for Jesus. You know, um, uh, Jesus grew up as the son of Joseph. He was taught to be a carpenter with Joseph. He went to the temple. I could even say 
And it sounds funny maybe, but St. Joseph was the catechist of Jesus himself. Again, Abbot Franz was the same. He opened the door for Jesus in South Africa. For example, when I was Bishop of Coxstad, way down on the coast in Bizana in Ponderland, um, I got to know the old people down there. And they told me about their ancestors, how they had been working in Durban. And in Durban, they heard about this wonderful monastery at Marion Hill, Matlatuzana. And so they began to come here for Mass. They loved the singing, they loved the prayers, they loved the teaching, they saw the skills, they saw the schools, they saw the boys and girls all advancing in knowledge and in health. And they said, we want that. So these men from Bizana went home, gathered their own women and children around them and began themselves to teach them the faith. And then in Holy Week, they would walk the three days from Bizana over the mountains and over the hills down into Lourdes Mission, the nearest great mission of Marion Hill at the time. And there they would live for Holy Week and have their children and wives baptized and brought the church in that way into the Diocese of Coxstad. So, indeed, I say Abbot Franz opened the door for Jesus to touch the hearts of so many people. Indeed, already before the year 1900, he sent the first young African men off to Rome to study to become priests. We remember Father Mganga, he's the great uh, leader of that group of four young men who were ordained priests around the year 1899. So Abel Franz was a man very, very much ahead of his time. And so I do say to all of us, let us learn from him. You know, this is the way God always works. He works through other people. He worked through St. Joseph. He worked through Mary. He worked through Abbot Franz in order to bring his message. You'll find it in the Old Testament. He worked through Abraham. He worked through Moses. He worked through Isaiah, Jeremiah, the prophets. He worked through Jesus and Jesus himself sent out the apostles as missionaries disciples and we today continue we have to prolong the work of Jesus and allow Jesus today to be totally involved uh, uh, to, uh, to meet people so that people today can meet Jesus as sh as surely as Mary Magdalene did as surely as Bartimaeus did as surely as uh, as Zacchaeus did they can be with Jesus today through the Catholic Church and each one of us you know is a missionary disciple we're sent out. We must learn from great people like Abbot Franz. And in conclusion, Kanye, I would just say, I would appeal to the people of South Africa, pray that Abbot Franz will be made a saint. You know, uh, for example, you know, maybe you have a very, very special need, health or something. Uh, ask him to pray for you and with you. Go see, of course, it is Jesus who does everything. Jesus is the saviour. It is Jesus who touches us. It is Jesus who is our health, our life, our way, our truth. Uh, but ask Abbot Franz to pray with you, to give you strength so that you receive healing. And if there are miracles, let us, let the monastery and Marion Hill know. So that like um, Benedict Das, who the wonderful saint of the north, we down in Natal may, may one day see the church honouring Abbot Franz Fanner as the saint of South, as a saint of South Africa, as someone who brought the faith to so many parts, all these famous schools and hospitals here in Natal, and now all these wonderful priests and sisters and Zulu people and people of all uh, tribes and nations who are Catholics. And so can you, um, I'm delighted to speak about Abbot Franz because in him I see the finger of the Holy Spirit, a person who responded to God's spirit and who work uh, to spread the message. So that's what I want to say today, can you? And thank you very much, Your Grace, for these beautiful words about uh, Abbot Francis Fana. And uh, we learn so much from this and we see that the church in South Africa you know, as they say, well established uh, in so many ways, in Christ and in the work of so many people who then had to come to this country for it to happen. So thank you very much, Your Grace. Thank you very much, Kenya, and greetings to all the wonderful people who, and I encourage you, support Radio Veritas in all ways, by prayer, but also in finance, because it's very expensive, you know, to keep a radio station. But thank you for all that you have done. Keep up the prayers. God bless you all. And uh, uh, we invite the Holy Spirit to bless us and be with us. Amen.